In this video, we're going to take a look at antiderivatives and the general solution to a differential equation. So up to this point, we've really been focusing hard on the derivative, but now we're going to work in reverse. So we are going to be given what is essentially the derivative, and we want to work backwards to find what was the original function. And so that process is called anti-differentiation, um, obviously because we're going in reverse. So essentially we're saying that the antiderivative of a function um, is f of x, so capital F, if when we take the derivative, we get the original function. So for instance, suppose I asked, what function has f of x equals 2x as a derivative? So if we were in the classroom, I would have everyone come up with an example, and we might say that f of x was x squared plus 3 or f of x equals x squared minus 7, or f of x equals x squared, just x squared. Now, the thing about this is if I took the derivative of this, oops, let me switch colors, f prime of x would be 2x, and f prime of x for this function would be 2x, because again, the derivative of 7 is 0, the derivative of 3 is 0. And here, f prime of x would be equal to 2x. So we can see that each of these functions, if I asked for the antiderivative, each of those functions would be correct. Um, so that is why we call f n antiderivative rather than the antiderivative, because each of these examples that we just came up with was an antiderivative. Uh, and in general, what we do is we'll use a constant. So we'll say that x squared plus c is an antiderivative of f, where c is called the constant of integration, and c can be any constant. Now notice, I cannot say that f of x was x squared plus 3x, because obviously if I took the derivative of that, I would get 2x plus 3. So notice, you do have to be careful. This is a constant of integration, meaning we don't have any variables. Essentially what this does is create a family of functions. So it's a family of functions where we have all of the family being essentially determined by the value of c. So y equals x squared plus 1, y equals x squared minus 3, and so on, we have an entire family of functions. And so if we were to graph those, I would have x squared plus 1, which would look something like this, x squared minus 3, which would look something like this. And we can see that we would just end up with essentially an entire graph full of the same function uh, but shifted upward or downward. So that is what our family of functions would look like. Um, and it's called, when we write it with the plus C, it is called the general solution of a differential equation. So a differential equation is just an equation that involves X, Y, and derivatives of Y. So for instance, um, if we had Y prime is equal to 5X, then we would want to look at how did I, how would I find the antiderivative of that? So we would say y is equal to, and remember, and we're, we haven't learned any of these rules yet, but if we think about this, let's just take this 5 out for a second. If we think about x, we know the original function had to have x squared. So if it was x squared over 2, that would make sense, right? Because, and I'm leaving the five out of it for a second, but if I took the derivative of x squared over two, um, d dx of x squared over two, you would say, well, the power rule would say take two x to the first, and then obviously I would divide that by two and I ended up with x. So this is going to bring us to the general power rule in just a moment. But again, what would I get here? This would be 5x squared over 2 plus c. So we have to include the plus c. 
let's say I wanted to do this one. I've got y equals because we're given the derivative, so I'm going in reverse now, just as I did before. Let's leave the 3 here and think just about x squared. Well, I would have to have x cubed in order for the derivative to be x squared, and I'm going to have to divide that by 3, just as I did here. I divided by 2. And then I have plus, and this is 2x, so I'm going to leave the 2 out front, and this is x to the first, so I need to increase it by 1, but then I need to divide by that value as well. So what was the original function? x cubed plus x squared. And again, could I find the derivative of that? 3x squared plus 2x, and that matches what we had before. Here are basic integration rules, and the most important one is the one that we've just been practicing without even really knowing it. This is called the power rule, just as we had a power rule with differentiation. This is basically the reverse of that since it's anti-differentiation. So if I'm integrating x to the nth power, I'm going to increase the power of x by 1, and then I'm going to divide by that value as well so that when I would take the derivative, those things would cancel out. And then, of course, don't forget plus c. So that is the one that you're going to use most often. Um, obviously, if I'm integrating 0, I'm just going to get c. If I'm integrating k, which is some constant, I'm going to get k times x. And again, all of these should make sense because if I was taking the derivative of, say, 4x, you would say the derivative is just 4. And that's what they're saying here is if you have 4, then it came from 4x. So that's really all the antiderivative is saying. Um, if you have some constant, it's okay to pull the constant out to the front. And if you have the sum or difference of two functions, it's okay to split those up, just like we did on that last example when we had 3x squared plus 2x. We did kind of each one separately. And then, of course, on this side, these are all your trig functions. If you already know the derivatives of the trig functions, then you're just going in reverse. So if we know the derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Notice we just put the negative on the cosine instead. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. The derivative of cos cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So you get the idea. It's just working in reverse. So here are your basic integration rules. Let's do a little practice. Let's do just a little bit of integration practice to make sure we know what we're doing. So we'll start with a fairly easy one. Remember, this is just 2 dx. So we're saying, what did I start with that would have a derivative of 2? And of course, that would be if I had 2x plus c. So that would be my um, integral. That would be my solution. My antiderivative of 2 would be 2x. And again, that's really just using that general power rule that says 2, and then I've got x to the 0 plus 1 over 1. So that's where that 2 comes from. So we didn't have to worry about the fact that we divided by 1. Now on the next question, we obviously do need to worry about that. So you can take the 3 out of it if you want and think about just the x squared dx. And if I integrate x squared, I'm going to use that power rule that says I'm going to increase 2 by 1. So I'm going to keep the 3 out front. I've got x cubed over 3. And then again, nothing else, so plus c. Those 3s will cancel, and I'll just get x cubed plus c. Now, if you're wondering, do I need to show this step? The answer is no, you don't. Because once you get used to finding the integral, once you used to get used to anti-differentiation, it's going to come as naturally to you as finding derivatives. So I don't need to see that, but I'm going to continue to show that for your benefit just to make sure that you understand where everything's coming from. Uh, for cosine of x, you can't use the power rule. You just have to think what function has cosine of x as the derivative, and hopefully we know that that is sine of x. And again, plus c. Now let's take a look at 1 over x to the third. So for one like this, I am going to rewrite this as x to the negative 3 dx. 
and then just use that power roll. So be careful here because I have a lot of students who say, okay, I'm going to increase negative three by one, and that's going to give me negative four over negative four. But if I take negative three plus one, that's negative two. So just make sure you're going in the right direction here. And then again, plus C, and then we just clean it up. So we have negative, we have a two in the denominator, and we have X squared in the denominator, and then plus C. And now same thing for radical X. I'm going to rewrite that as X to the one half DX. So now I'm going to use the power rule that says X to the one half plus one, which is three halves, divided by three halves. And that's going to give me two thirds because I'm dividing by three halves. So I'm multiplying by two thirds and then X to the three halves plus C. And then lastly, of course, keep that four out of it. Think about what function has sine of X as a derivative. Well, if I took the derivative of cosine of X, it would be negative sine of X. So this has going to have to be negative four cosine of X in order for the derivative to end up being positive sine of X. Coming up next, we're going to go a step further in our solution to the differential equation by finding the particular solution.